What a fantastic day this is for Minnesota, a day where we can all be proud to be Minnesotans and uh, want to thank the principals who made this uh, great event upcoming possible for Minnesota, uh, Marilyn Carlson Nelson, Doug Baker, Richard Davis, who chaired the host committee, uh, Mark Wilf, and his brother Ziggy, the Vikings, who made the closing case uh, that put us over the top, and uh, Michelle Kellum Helgen has just done a phenomenal job of, of putting the stadium forward on time and on budget, and uh, whose who's ecstatic leap topped uh, Maya Moore's highest, uh, and definitely will be something we'll all treasure. Um, you know, especially uh, satisfying. I remember a couple of years ago when we played uh, New Orleans in the NFC uh, Championship game, and and unfortunately didn't quite work out. So this is this is a great uh, res response to that. Um, I think that uh, they uh, applied ten previous times, and they, they were picked every single time. And it was the 300th anniversary of their city, which they were going to launch with the Super Bowl. And for all of you to come in and and uh, take take it away from them, uh, it couldn't be better. Couldn't be better. And. Uh, I also look forward to, you know, I read that the, never in the Super Bowl history as far as a, a, a home team played in the Super Bowl. So the Vikings, uh, 2018, yes. oh, we can start sooner than that, but uh, 2018, <laughs> for sure, go on our hometown team and our hometown stadium and uh, showcase to the world. So, again, thank you all very much. And uh, this opportunity for Minnesota is really going to be ex extraordinary, exciting. And uh, it's going to make a lot of people a lot of money in Minnesota. Mark. Thank you, Governor. Thank you, Governor Dayton. And on behalf of my brother Ziggy and the entire Minnesota Vikings organization, I want to thank everyone who played a significant role in helping secure this bid. We were ready, and we did it. I want to personally thank you, Governor Dayton, for putting together such a tremendous team of leaders in Doug Baker, Richard Davis, and Marilyn Carlson Nelson. Richard and Marilyn's outstanding presentation to NFL owners yesterday was one of the keys to delivering the Super Bowl to Minnesota. I also want to thank the entire bid committee, especially representatives from Meet Minneapolis, the Minnesota Sports Facilities Authority, and Greater MSP for their tireless efforts throughout the process. We appreciate all the business and community leaders and public officials who participated in this bid. It truly was another great example of a successful public-private partnership. And finally, I want to thank the other 31 NFL teams and owners and Commissioner Roger Goodell for their confidence in Vikings ownership and in this market. The NFL is extremely impressed with Minnesota, and they're convinced, and we will, deliver a great Super Bowl in February 2018. Lastly, I want to mention that even prior to the passage of the stadium legislation two years ago, we made a commitment to the state of Minnesota to make this new stadium one of the best multi-purpose facilities in the world and to ensure its ability to host significant national and international events year-round. Super Bowl 52 in 2018 will give us that opportunity to showcase Minnesota as an outstanding host and will be a catalyst in pursuing and securing other major events in the future. Thank you. Well, thank you, Governor, for this privilege, and Mark, thanks to you and Ziggy for giving us this team. So first of all, i got to tell you, I didn't know we could jump that high. So if you'd like these guys to jump afterward, <laughs> we'll be reprising our thrill of a moment that we would love to uh, do again. Listen, this was a great day yesterday for our state, and you gave us the privilege of telling the story about the wonderful people that live here and this wonderful opportunity to host probably the world's biggest game in February of 2018. The new stadium was a big part of it, and so I want to thank everyone in this great state that allowed this stadium to be approved and to allow it to come out of the ground. Now seven months into the uh, development, it's a very important centerpiece to the conversation we had yesterday with the owners. The second other big piece was to talk about that it's time. It's our time, it's our year, and we're ready. We consider this a 12-year journey to get to this point, and we want to make it clear to them that we're ready to perform at the highest level on the best stage. When you think about it, it's about time that America's game football is moved around the country. We said it's about time to move it north. I mean really north. And we said if you're going to do it and start moving it around like a caravan, start with us in 2018. 
It's going to provide amazing opportunity and visibility for this community, this entire state, and we're looking forward to showing it off. It's not just the national, but it's international. You know about the number of people that will visit, and even more that will watch and pay attention to what happens here. We're going to celebrate winter like no one else can. It's what we do. We do it better than anyone else. So we're going to welcome people here for that wonderful celebration. We're going to welcome them back for all the winters beyond that to come back and be part of something this special and this unique. And finally, we will move from yesterday to the host, the bid committee, to in the future a host committee. And those details are not at all developed, but you can well bet that those of us engaged now want to stay engaged until this thing is find its way to February 4th of 2018, when we'll be doing this all over again and celebrating the best Super Bowl in the history of 52 games held right here in the wonderful state of Minnesota. Indeed, it's a pleasure to represent all of you. We're very, very proud. I couldn't have enjoyed my time more than with these two folks getting this story told. And I must say, Skull Vikings. Thank you. I'm feeling so nostalgic, excited and nostalgic because it was in this room in 1992 that we announced the 1992 Super Bowl. And if anyone had told me that it would be this long, but we decided it was a kind of symmetry, right? Between 26, the 26th and now the 52nd. Let's hope we don't have to wait for any multiple for the very next one. What can I tell you? First of all, we, our theme was built for the bold. And it really worked. It was so strong. It was bold, a bold new stadium, a bold community with a beautiful new $53 million mall, uh, Nicollet Mall that's going to be called Super Bowl Boulevard. We were able to tell them that our community had already put $20 million just this week into that mall. That, combined with the other public contributions, said to them that this is not some small elite group. This is the entire state of Minnesota who really wants our city to be competitive way into the future. So we were very proud to represent that. And then we talked a little bit about the Mall of America and Bloomington, and we talked about St. Paul, the fact that we every decade maybe we build one of those castles and you can imagine the visual with that castle i mean no one else has anything like that we're very excited to have the whole saint paul winter carnival already agreed to build one and to have the sculpture competition related to football and sport then we talked about Bloomington and the Mall of America and the fact that they'll have both a media party there and a big uh, close the mall for the NFL and the NFL family. They couldn't believe that, that this is going to happen here in our community, and no one else has that. And then we talked a little bit about the fact that we have airports that are so close. Our airport is closed really less than most, and it's closer to other cities. Uh, we, we, we're the only one of the three competing cities that has a hub like this with direct flights. So. The wonderful thing for us is that the more we bragged about our community, the more we loved it, and the more we felt like we deserved this. But then we kept hearing rumors that New Orleans was the favorite, and we saw the press kind of around the New Orleans room, and I felt like I was on a roller coaster. We got good news, and then we got bad news, and we knew we could see, there's a screen so we could see them voting. You could see them literally putting the votes into piles, Mark, but I was trying to figure out which, which one is us. <laughs> and then, of course, they didn't get a supermajority, and it went to another vote, and our group was so confident, but because last time, it really took us three different bids to get the Super Bowl, my heart was just pounding because I could remember that sometimes you don't, you just don't win the first time. So when they finally said Minnesota, it was just such an affirmation of, of our bid, but mostly of our community and of all the people here, the, the great fans here. And for me, the very best part is that we started something really meaningful. In 1992, we coined the term a party with a purpose. And I remember Pete Rosell looking at me and saying, there is a purpose, Marilyn. It's the football game. And at the time, we all laughed. And I said, no, in Minnesota, we like to party, but we really like to have a purpose. 
So we had several wonderful things that went on in our community that year, but we started the Taste of the NFL. And our own Minnesota, Wayne Kostrowski, has worked with the NFL every year since. They've raised over $40 million that's gone into food shelves in all the NFL cities. And so our proposal is another legacy program. This one has to do with youth and the next generation. We're going to work with the Mayo Clinic physicians with the NFL to work on nutrition, safety, and uh, ultimately performance for the next generation. I think it's a direction that the NFL is already taking. We salute the fact that the NFL realizes that we have to find a way for young people to play the game safely and still perform at high levels. And so we will work together and collaborate to create something for all all the coaches and youth, we call it the Minnesota, or the NFL Youth and Coaches Clinic. It will take place during Super Bowl week. It will be free, and then it's just possible that this, again, will be a legacy that can move beyond Minnesota and impact the next generation of American children. Thank you. Well, I'm Doug Baker, and I'd like to thank the governor for the phone call. I appreciate it. And it's been a great thrill to work with Marilyn and Richard on this. We've had a lot of fun. Only disappointment was I had a prior engagement, so I couldn't join the team in Atlanta. I was in LA. The benefit of that turned out to be I'm flying home while they're in the meeting, and I'm getting these updates via Wi-Fi. And they're updates like 100 years ago, like by telex or teletype. It's First vote, no supermajority. Second vote, Indy's out. Third vote, no supermajority. Fourth vote, and then you wait. And you wait. And you wait. And finally, you get, we won. Now, I'm traveling with somebody. He's sitting next to me, and of course, he's asleep. So there's nobody to talk to about it, right? You're just sort of, ah! So anyway, it was a, it was a thrill, and it's been a, been a great, great deal of fun. But this has been a big team that's pulled this together. And it's a team that's done a lot of great work. And there's a lot of work in front of us. So part of what was presented were all the events. So the Super Bowl's changed. 92 was really a single day event or a weekend event. This is a week long event. So there's the NFL experience, or there's the Super Bowl Boulevard, St. Paul Winter Carnival, and New Ice Palace, which we want to build the theme around the NFL. Media Day at Excel Energy Center. NFL Honors at the Ordway Center. We'll demonstrate our hospitality with the Mall of America party that Marilyn just talked about. It's a big production, which is why we've worked so hard to raise the money, which is why we need a great team, and why we'll need to think about how we organize going forward. But the bid process, which makes all this future work, possible really happened because we had a great team and many of them are sitting here and it wouldn't have happened without them. I would say one of the things Richard referred to, when we went out and asked the corporate community for financial support and other support, they stood up very quickly, readily, and basically put the money in and said, we will figure this out, this is great for the community. We also had a number of people who stood up and were part of the presentation. People like Mary Brainerd from Health Partners, Dave McClennan from Cargill, John Mulligan from Target, Maureen Bosch at the Mall of America, and Chris Plazinski, Land O'Lakes, helped voice their support on the video because part of what we sold was a public-private partnership and how this community works together to get things done and do things in a terrific way. We also had Minnesota celebrities in the videos. We had Minnesota Hall of Fame team of Bud Grant, Chris Carter, current great Adrian Peterson, and our own Olympian, Lindsey Vaughn. We also had Andrew Zimmerman and Guthrie actors and Viking fans and a whole host of others. So it was terrific. I really think the presentation was unbelievable. And that's a thanks to a lot of the people standing behind me. So it took a lot of us to pull this together. Steve Gordon really helped to focus and bring the leadership Mr. Langley, Michelle, Melvin, Katie, Lester. It was a team effort, and I am very, very proud to have been part of that team, a small part, because a lot of the work happened with these guys behind here. And so finally, let me just go through and list a few others who deserve some acknowledgement. Team at Meet Minneapolis, team at Greater MSP, the winning creative team at Olson, who was huge, strategic consulting firm at Thunheim, don't Blink TV video production, MentorMate, as well as stadium partners. I should have a t-shirt with all these logos. 
Is that coming? All right. HKS Architects, Mortensen Construction, Ryan Companies, and Populous. And the state support and leadership, of course, of the Vikings. And I would say the Vikings stood up in a great way and were really, really helpful, helping us raise the money. Really. It's fantastic. And finally, Minnesota Sports Facilities Authority, which the governor so appropriately acknowledged right up front. So with that, let me turn it back, I guess, to the governor to open up for Q&A, and thank you. Questions? Governor, obviously, there's a bid back here. The bid is one thing, but does the real work begin now of trying to raise the private money and whatever tax breaks might be necessary to, to make this actually happen? Well, we <clears throat> had a letter signed by <clears throat> the four caucus leaders myself during the session that pledged our, our support for what would become necessary it wasn't specific support for anything so I don't know uh, there are no details to follow up at this time but it would certainly be re I'll certainly if I'm around next year be receptive to whatever uh, continuation of this public private partnership uh, is asked for the, the sales tax exemption on the tickets is already in place uh, because of the previous Super Bowl and it's ongoing so and that's about uh, $9 million, as I recall, is it? So that, and which was the largest uh, por uh, public portion that was listed as a possible contribution. So, so that's already in place. And uh, we'll see what, see what else. What other possibilities are there uh, that the state could do? You know, salaries, NFL salaries? Yeah, those, those, uh, why don't you wait Sure, sure. The, um, the various pieces that we're looking at are also a uh, sales tax exemption on the other events. They listed the NFL experience, uh, some of the other events that people would buy tickets to. Now the NFL re asks that you don't tax those tickets either. So that's part of it. And then really the only other piece is, other than the sales tax pieces, are the taxes on income tax. And what we decided, the legislative leaders and the governor were pretty clear that that was something they weren't comfortable supporting. So the other pieces, I think the legislative leaders and the governor felt like they could move ahead with, uh, tickets to the game already done and in statute, and then the income tax piece will be done through the fundraising from the private sector. What about lodging? Would there be an exemption on lodging taxes? No, lodging for the for the folks that come in is all include. They pay taxes are paid on that. The only lodging that they've talked about is basically some of the NFL staff lodging that takes place over the course as they come in for various things, and I think that would possibly be included. So, we really have to sit down with the NFL now that we have the bid, and really look at the details of what it is that that we're looking at what's required and determine which pieces the private sector will pay for and what will be covered under the public sector. So we come back next year, work with the legislative leaders and, and pass the legislation that would be required. What's the value of the lodge and all the events? Like, do you know, the you know I really don't. Again, we've got to sit down. The exemption on related events, sales tax exemption? I, I, don't, I don't know what it is. It depends on what it covers. So. For the, for the, I mean, in other words, not just the tickets, but the, I don't, I don't know. It say it depends on what the, how the related events are defined. But, uh, I don't have anything other than the $9 million that's already in statute. That's the only thing that's been agreed to. That's the only thing that's been committed. There's no other commitment uh, explicit or implicit. And uh, that's where it stands. Can I clarify that one? These guys have already told us there's an understanding with the NFL that they're going to do the exemption on events. Is that incorrect? Exemption on? On, on the related events. Is that not correct? If that's, if that's your agreement with the NFL, but the, the four leaders have not signed off on that to my knowledge. And as it relates to the player salaries, are you saying that you're going to raise private money to pay what the players would have owed on whatever yeah. income they the, the understanding with the NFL is that we will meet the requirements that are put in that they, that they have in place for the tax exemptions that have to be taken care of. If the th specifically the income tax is the one piece that the legislative leaders were very specific that they would not do, that they would not feel comfortable doing. 
So in fact, and again, we have not, we've got to sit down with the NFL. We've got to really figure out what all the pieces are and what the values are, and then determine what pieces are going to be covered by the legislative leaders and the governor and what's going to be covered by the private sector. I think the related events, and again, we can you know, look at some estimates from other cities, but we really don't know what the prices will be. We don't know what the exact events will be, and we will have more information that we, on that as we work with the NFL. And we will come back and be able to detail what some of that will include. Governor Dayton. In 1992, when he hosted the Super Bowl before, the black community really was openly critical that there was no inclusion in any part of the planning process and the host committee all the way into volunteers. So now I know there's a workforce diversity goals for building the stadium. There ought to be something similar to that to put together this event as well. Well, your point's well taken. The Minnesota Stadium Authority has really led the way in terms of diversity in hiring and the goal is 39 percent uh, which is really a great accomplishment and it's something uh, you're, uh, again we should carry forward into the uh, planning committee is being called now and, and it will reflect the diversity of our metropolitan area diversity of our state governor what about the public relations challenge of our weather we just came off a wicked winter i noticed the packet mentions warming houses and fire pits what are you doing practically? It's got to be cold enough to build the ice castle, but not so cold as to freeze everybody out of the stadium. So that's going to take some fine calibration there. Uh, and, uh, you know, whoever is governor in 2018 will be directly responsible for that. But I don't know, since I'm not sure who that includes. Uh, but, yeah, you want to go ahead? So um, we just hit it right on. We said we do winter better than anyone else. Come here on purpose for the winter. And if you think about it, it it's a wonderful coincidence that the, that the Winter Olympics start the week after our game is over. And so we're going to get the whole world just thinking about what it's like to imagine the, the uh, NBC television cameras uh, panning away while they're going to commercial break and they'll see someone on the lopet or they'll see someone building an ice castle or they'll see people skating on the, on the lakes or even curling. We might do that in places you wouldn't expect like on Super Bowl, on NFL Boulevard. So we've got this opportunity to make this a reason for people to come for the Super Bowl. And I want it to be so cool that they'll say, let's come back in winter because these guys really do it well. Like you would expect a, a, a city in the, in the Alps would do when we really understand how to do it and do it well. Our biggest challenge is to prove to people that they can move around and that the connectivity of the city will work and that all the ability for them to get around and move about will be well. And some of the money we have raised, by the way, we raised $30 million like within a week. That's the kind of support this corporate community and private community set up. We'll probably need between 30 and 40 million. We haven't even gotten to half of the companies yet as we seek the kind of support we'll need now that we have the bid. But those monies are intentionally what goes to offset some of the costs of the things like the snow removal and the building of the special tents and the warming areas and all the security that will go on in all the cities that will be involved. So that's where the money goes. That's why we have to raise that much money. Whatever's left and is done by tax rebates, we'll take care of the rest of it. And this will not be an issue for the people of Minnesota. It won't. It'll be something that we'll make sure we cover so that it's a net positive on tax revenues and intensely positive on tens of millions of dollars, if not hundreds of million in total revenue brought to the city in the months of January and February. Mr. Dix, what yes. role did the design of the new stadium play in your successful bid? When they, obviously, the new stadium would be required, right. but were they wowed by the stadium and the surrounding developments? How big a role was that? Great question. They were wowed by the stadium for sure. It's, it's an OMG kind of a stadium. And we talked about these five pivot doors that opened to the, back to the city, largest in the world. And it's kind of cool. It's not the second largest. It's the largest in the world. They love the uh, opaque uh, uh, ceiling. They like the fact they'll be inside, outside. But then we're talking about the celebration of the, uh, of the NFL um, uh, programs and all the celebration that goes on next to the stadium will be in a big tent on that new plaza that we're all building that we know about. And that's where we'll have the big parties. And it will be a very large tent with nice warming, comfortable temperatures. It'll be right next to the stadium. So effectively, instead of having a convention center right up next to the stadium, we'll create our own. And they love that idea. And then they know about the eight miles of skywalks, and they know about the connectivity of St. Paul being as involved as Bloomington, as downtown Minneapolis, as outstate. So we're going to try to make this a real regional deal. And I think they like that a lot because a lot of cities can't actually do that. So just to be clear on the, on the, on the tax issue again, the, the sales, the exemption is there on tickets to the game. The ancillary events issue is to be determined and that private fundraising is going to account for the exemption on player salaries. Uh, that's what's been specified so far. 
Uh, remember, we're, you know, we're three and a half years away from this, uh, so there'll be giving you plenty of public scrutiny, whatever's done uh, in the public arena beyond what's uh, already provided in statute is gonna go through the legislative process, and I assume next year and maybe years following, but um, you know, it, it'll, nothing else has been committed. The, the letter from the four caucus leaders, myself, is, you know, you can get copies of it, it's very, very clear. Uh, I was talking about support in general, but, but nothing uh, specific. Any other questions? Question for uh, Mark Will. Can you, uh, can you tell us a story we haven't heard already about what happened inside that owner's room? Was there a, a moment or a, a key block of owners that swung your way, or how did it develop? Well, we spoke, uh, we've, we've been speaking with the, owner, the ownership for, for really months regarding this uh, bid process, just even to become a finalist back in the fall. We had to have a, an initial presentation. And then as we moved forward, we were constantly communicating. And uh, what, what I emphasized was the, uh, the strength of the public-private partnership and how great we've worked together towards building this stadium. And I think it's something important that the league and our ownership, our partners in the league, recognize that type of value of what a, what a stadium and what, what this kind of public-private partnership can mean for cities to get this kind of facility. And second, we just felt we're in a critical phase in our stadium building process, and we felt the boost of having a Super Bowl would be something very special, very unique, and we thought the community with uh, the presentation that, our, that the, the host chairs made was, was so effective. I think all of that combined uh, really, really swung, swung the votes, and I mean, the reality was it was nerve-wracking till the very last moment, uh, just like you saw on television when they announced us as the winner. I mean, we, we had great competition. New Orleans and Indianapolis did fantastic jobs. They've, they've hosted Super Bowls and done a fantastic job, and we were fortunate to uh, be prevailing in this in, in this bid, and uh, we look forward to hosting a great event. Are there any special design considerations that the Super Bowl requires that you can do now because you're in the early phase of your construction? Do you have to do anything different with your design or anything that, that you weren't expecting? Well, I, I think as part of our, our bid presentation, we spent a lot of time with the league. There, there are quite a few uh, requirements in terms of seating capacity, and, and premium seating and uh, how to put the building together for the Super Bowl. So there was a lot of work with the, super, with the NFL staff uh, to put together what, the, uh, what it's going to look like. So the design to the, to the stadium was uh, very much having in mind a Super Bowl and it was part of the design when, we had, when the legislation was passed and the agreement was made with the government that we had the ability to host Super Bowl and other, other special events. What about all the planning? How does that play out? What's next? A nap. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Um, as I said, we were, we were a bid committee yesterday, and we're moving toward host committee next. Um, it's, that is the earliest question um, to have, not have an answer, because we're going to start figuring out what it takes with three and a half years to develop this wonderful game. But the people standing here behind me and all that were involved that aren't intend to be part of that going forward. And Rochelle, we want to take this from a idea to an execution and I think I said yesterday we're going to act like it's going to be very quickly like tomorrow so we're going to immobilize now we're going to get everybody lined up and start preparing for this wonderful game we're also going to attend all the next few games and make sure that we understand best practices we've worked with those who've already hosted and we'll continue to find out what the best solutions are for some of the best opportunities to create a Super Bowl that will wow people for the rest of eternity. So we'll just start now, effectively, we'll say tomorrow, we'll start to move on the host committee, develop who it is and what it is. What are the okay. big, big things that will be newly constructed or will get new uses? Right, okay, that's amazing, number of things, right? So we've got the, uh, first of all, the, the stadium itself, a right? billion dollar stadium. They're gonna have another $400 million set up in and around, you know, the Ryan development and all that's gonna come from that. The new hotels will be part of that business uh, complex. We've got another $300 million in renovations and expansion happening at the Mall of America. Another $100 million in some of the practice fields and facilities that will be useful to the, to the Super Bowl uh, teams as they arrive here in 2018. And the Nicolette Mall, as you heard, we just, as you know, we just approved over $20 million for the development of that in 2016, which will then be made and built with the idea of making sure that it can transform into NFL Boulevard in 2018. So all the catalysts, no city had anywhere near what we have in terms of what's about to happen in the city between now and the day of the game, and I think we were able to, to showcase that pretty well too. Governor, Thank you, Governor, do you regard this as validation for going out on a limb on this stadium deal? Uh, to get it done? So it's a wonderful success for Minnesota, and again, a great tribute to the leadership that was provided here. The reason to build the stadium was not to win a Super Bowl. 
the reason was to, one, keep the Vikings here for another generation and to put some 7,500 Minnesotans to work uh, over the next couple of years to build the stadium and also serve as a catalyst for this other economic development that Mr. Davis just described. I mean, the, the downtown east part of Minneapolis has, you know, really become almost a blighted area. The Metrodome didn't generate any related economic uh, activity around it. And now we're already within months of the stadium getting underway, have this uh, large Ryan construction project going, um, cited as the largest to private sector development project in Minneapolis in a generation. You have a f fabulous park uh, and the other uh, related activities will be generated by th those, those development. I mean, this is going to have a just transformative impact on, on that region of, of the city, which improves in the economic base for the entire state. That was the reason to do the project. It's about jobs for Minnesota. It's about economic growth for Minnesota. It's about uh, revitalizing downtown part of the city of Minneapolis and about uh, hosting a Super Bowl that people can be very excited about. And, and when the Vikings get in it and win the game, it's going to just be frosty on the cake. Thank you. Thank you.